in this practical video we will talk discuss about Schilling's test now this uh, Schilling's test cannot be demonstrated upon a patient right now but we have to explain so through this PowerPoint let us try to understand Schilling's test so what is Schilling's test Schilling's test can be defined as an investigation that is done to detect the rate of vitamin B12 that is copalamine absorption by the use of radioactive copalamine and it also helps to know if the body is producing intrinsic factor that is a protein that is produced by the stomach that helps in the absorption of vitamin B12 so intrinsic factor level level is confirmed by Schilling's test anti-intrinsic factor in the body or antiviral in the body the test is used to determine the absorption of vitamin b12 by measuring the excretion of radioactive b12 in the urine and it is, it is used to distinguish pernicious anemia from nutritional anemia now coming to the principles of Schilling's test it is a cell process actually it is a set of process of four stages so, first, a radioactive P12 is given. Then, intramuscular injection of non-radioactive B12 to saturate the B12 binding proteins and to flush out the cobalamin B12, radioactive cobalamin B12. And the urine is collected for 24 hours. And if normal, then the person will excrete greater than 10% of the oral dose. And if the person is abnormal, then it will it will show lesser than ten percent. So we have to repeat the test with the addition of oral intrinsic factor. First, we have given oral radioactive B12. Now we have to give oral intrinsic factor. If again after this test is normal, then the diagnosis is pernicious anemia. If still abnormal, then the lesion must be in the terminal ileum or because of bacterial overgrowth. So that is how the uh, Schilling's test is done. So it's a picture of us. We inject non-radioactive vitamin B12 and then radioactive B12 that is ingested early and we collect the urine samples and measure it. So when the radio radio labeled vitamin B B12 is given orally and the amount of the radioactivity absorbed into the blood and excreted in the urine is measured. Mm. If lack of intrinsic factor is a problem, then absorption will be low unless intrinsic factor is given orally. So this is the second stage. Okay. So if lack of intrinsic factor is a problem then absorption will be low unless intrinsic factor is given orally and if absorption is low then vitamin b12 and intrinsic factor are given together then the terminal ileum is likely to be damaged or there is something else that is blocking the absorption of b12 or intrinsic factor complex causes of positive shillings test Reasons that is reasons for mal malabsorption. The absorption is decreased in ileal disease, intrinsic factor deficiency such as pernicious anemia, bacterial overgrowth in the gastro gastrointestinal tract. So this Schilling test is not specific, but it is just to screen out. So if these cases are being diagnosed, then we have to again undergo for confirmatory test. So this test is usually not practiced anymore since there are so many tests that is upcoming. But it is a very important test to rule out in the investigation. So Schilling test has four phases that I've, uh, that I've just said earlier that helps to identify the underlying cause of vitamin B12 deficiency. Stage 1. Radioactive copalamin is given orally with non-labeled Copalamine, this is given intramuscularly to saturate the body needs. Then 24 hours urine copalamine excretion is determined. Normally, 
greater than eight persons should be excluded. Or in some books, we will see greater than ten person. So either ten or eight, that is that should be okay. So greater than eight should be excluded. But if the excretion rate is less than eight person, it may indicate malabsorption of vitamin B12. So depending on the hospital or depending on the laboratory practical, then SOB followed. The normal values have to be maintained. Stage 2. Labeled cobalamin bound to intrinsic factor, that is IF, oral IF, is given. And if vitamin B12 deficiency was caused by pernicious anemia, vitamin B12 absorption, absorption will be corrected. Right. That is, the daily urinary excretion rate will be greater than 8%. In patients with abnormal result, that is, lesser than 8% excretion rate, such as in the disease of the terminal ileum or pancreatic insufficiency, vitamin B12 absorption will not be corrected. So, in this stage, if the absorption is corrected, then it is pernicious anemia. And if it is not corrected, then it is because of disease of terminal ileum or maybe because of bacterial growth now in stage 3 radio so if this is not correct then we then we have to go to the stage 3 that is radioactive copolamin repeated after two weeks of antibiotics and vitamin b12 absorption is corrected in patients with bacterial overgrowth such as in blind loop syndrome now in stage 4 a fourth stage is done to determine malabsorption of vitamin b12 caused by chronic pancreatitis in this stage radio level cobalamin is given after a three-day course of pancreatic enzymes if it is caused by chronic pancreatitis, uh, chronic pancreatitis then the excretion rate is corrected so this is a stepwise procedure so i hope you have understood the four stages now coming to the calculation calculation of the percentage of vitamin b12 dose excreted in urine that is percentage equal to total counts where we need in 24 hour urine sample divided by counts per minute in the standard known as the test dose into 100 so that is how we calculate so coming to the interpretation normal shilling test should give a value of greater than 30 persons excretion in 24 hours so as I said earlier there isn't there isn't any specific uh, normal value so it depends upon the te uh, depends upon the books authors or um, the laboratory SOPs and procedures that uh, that um, determines the normal value All right so abnormal taste is defined as less than 10 person excretion in 24 hours and is seen in pernicious anemia chronic pancreatitis bacterial overgrowth and Ileal disease. You should also note this that false results may be obtained in patients with associated renal diseases. So that is all about Schilling's test. I hope you have understood. Thank you.